Okay, so today we'll use the ELE machine, so it's got a computer on the top. Uh, this is the cage. What good is the cage? It protects us from flying shrapnel. You can open the cage by pulling up on this lever over here. Okay, so we put the specimen in here. See this? Okay, so we'll put the specimen in here. There's a ram under here, so it, it pushes up from the bottom. You see this little sensor over here on the side? So can you get that on film? See the little sensor over here? Okay, so yeah, that's good, you got it on film. The little sensor here, uh, that shuts the hydraulic pump down if the ram comes up too high. And so I don't want the ram to come up too high or that shuts off the hydraulic pump. Okay, so this is a computer on top. I can turn it on in the back here. Okay, so I've got various icons here. Uh, if I want to look at the record. Okay, the last test that I did was on 412. When was 412? Was that on Tuesday? Okay, so it's got a record of it in here. Okay, and then I press the home arrow to take me back to the home screen. If I press this icon right here, it's an icon that has little pictures of test specimens on it. I can put in the specs for the test specimen. So this is a circular specimen. So I touch the circle icon. And it's 12 by 6, so I press the 12 by 6 icon. Okay, uh, we want to load it at 1,000 pounds per second. So right here I press this icon and I can type in 1,000 pounds per second. Okay, so if I press the pencil icon, then I can type in a new number. So this X icon is like backspace, so I take away the uh, 3,000, whatever it just said, and I can type in 1,000. Okay, and then press check mark. And there we have it. It will load at 1,000 pounds per second. Get everything else in order. Oh yeah, I want to give it a new file name. So if I touch this portion of the screen, I can type in a new file name. And then when I touch the check mark icon, it saves that file name. So everything in order here, 12 by 6, 1,000. Okay, so everything's good, so I press the check mark icon. Okay, so now I have to turn on the hydraulic pump. So how do I do that? This switch right here, so that's the hydraulic pump. Uh, there's a control lever over here on the right. The control lever has several different settings. If you can hear me talk. The control lever, not level, lever. The control lever has several different settings. It's got retract, that's like reverse. Reverse, so after the specimen breaks, I can switch it to retract so I can remove it. Uh, what retract does is it makes the bottom ram drop back down. So it's, it's like reverse in your car. It's got a hold. Hold. So what does hold do? That's like tapping the brakes. Okay, I want to stop the test, so that's what hold does. And then it's got metered advance. You know what metered advance does? The, the test is ready to start and I'm going to load it. I'm going to load it at uh, 1,000 pounds per second. And then I've got full advance. So full advance, what does that do? If I want to float the table, so by floating the table, I'm moving the bottom ram up a little bit. Uh, so those are the settings. Retract, hold, meter in advance, full advance. But now I want it on retract. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the hydraulic pump with this toggle switch over here. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, you see this silver knob on the top? Over here you can't see a thing, but over here you can see it. See the silver knob? You can watch the video later uh, when I post this. See the silver knob? Uh, that's the metering valve. So although I set a thousand pounds per second, if I want to have more control over it, I can use a metering valve to make it go faster or slower. So that's what the metering valve does. As long as the, the control lever is on metered advance, then I can control the rate with the metering valve. Okay. All right, so before I even turn on the hydraulic pump, I should probably load the specimen. Uh, this is an awful lot of space, isn't it? An awful lot of space. So what I discovered the other day is that if I don't put a spacer in here, I start the test and then the hydraulic pump shuts down pretty quick. Why do you think it does that? Uh, because there's a sensor in here and the, the bottom ram, if it moves up too high, then the sensor shuts off the hydraulic pump. So I need a spacer in here. I have to put a spacer in here so that that sensor isn't triggered. So what do I use as a spacer? Put it in here. 
right in here on top of the bullseye. So the circles that are called the bullseye, the concentric circles in here. All right, thank you. What do you think the capacity of this machine is? Okay, it's actually 500 kips, so it'll go up as high as 500. Okay, so I'm going to center this. Uh, but I'd like to close that gap, so how do I do that? Well, first I have to turn on the hydraulic pump. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. Okay, so how do I close that gap? I don't want to stick my fingers in there now because the hydraulic pump is on. So I'll stick my clipboard in there. So this gap up here, how do I close that gap? Okay, by moving the lever to full advance, and you can watch the gap close. You see the bottom ram coming up? Can you see anything over here? Okay, now I'm going to rotate it to hold. I'm on hold right now. Okay, I'm just centering it here. You see it on the top plate. I'm going to center that on the top of the specimen. Okay, so full advance. Okay, hold. About a 300, uh, 380 pound preload. So I want to back off a little bit. So I'll switch it to retract so I can back off the load a little bit. Okay, but I have, to be, I have to be kind of quick because I don't want it to retract too much. Okay, sure, I can go with that. Okay, so right now I'm on hold. So I think I'm ready to start this. Uh, okay. So I closed the cage door. Everyone got goggles on? You okay over there? You got goggles? Well, then you're so, you're so far away, I don't think it matters, but okay. Okay, that's okay. All right, so now I closed the cage door. And how do I start the test? I turn this to metered advance. Okay, and it's picking up load on its own. Uh, because I had the valve open a little bit. I don't want to go that fast, so I'm slowing it down. I had the metering valve open a little bit, so I start picking up load immediately. Okay, so we're up to 21,000, 22,000. Okay, so this is a good rate. I'm just going to walk over here. It'll keep adding load at its own. And I had the metering valve open a little bit when I switched it to metered advance. Uh, so it started picking up load immediately. I should have had that valve closed when I started, but it's okay. So I'm up to 62,000. 70,000. You're not in a hurry, are you? You're looking at your watch. Oh. 96,000. This is strong. A hundred thousand. Oh, now it's not. Okay. See, it, it tells me what the maximum load was, so uh, he's getting that on film. Uh, okay, so the bottom ram is continuing to rise. It'll shut off by itself when, that's, when it hits that sensor. I can make it go a little faster if I turn the metering valve. Oh. It'll go off by itself when it hits the sensor. Oh, you're 
you're making a phone call. Because there's a sensor in there that shuts off the hydraulic pump when it goes up too high, when the, when the bottom ram goes up too high. Okay, watch your feet. Okay, what kind of failure is that? I don't know. I probably should have opened the cage before it failed this much so that we could see what kind of failure it was. But maybe we can tell from the wreckage. Bottom ram goes back down. Why did it turn back on? Because it passed the sensor. When the bottom ram drops past the sensor, then it turns back on by itself. Kips is that? Uh, 101.566 kips. 